Ben, how you doing? It's Patrick Blanc from Miramar calling. Hey, long man. Long time. Man. Long time. How's it going, man? Glad to have you on the line. What's on your mind? Doing all right, Ben. I just wanted to um, get your, um, your your take on this and just to give you my observation to see if you agree. Okay. Because I think Fox News has really gone up the deep, and I think it matters in this case. It does. Because Fox News to me has been, it always been conservative, even, even far right. But now they've come to a point where they're state TV to me. There, there's no difference between the line that Trump is parroting and what Fox News is are telling their viewers. Yeah. And I, I think we in the left have, have got to stop acting as if they're honest actors. Yeah. And there's something that has been bothering me over the years, but it's, it's more um, pressing it now in that I think we on the left, we view conservatism as a competing political ideology. Hmm. We disagree with it. We want to defeat it at the, the ballot box. But because we view it as a, a political ideology, we, we, we can make concessions to it. Hmm. We can hear them out and say, okay, we have a point here. But the right doesn't view liberalism as that. They view it as an inherent evil. Mm. And they've been indoctrinated over the last 30, 40 years that because it's an inherent evil, any concession made to it is a sort a of failure. complicity with yeah. immorality. Yeah. And this is why there is not there isn't any overture we can make that they'll come over because it's not just a competing political ideology to them is accepting a sense of immorality. Mm. And where that becomes relevant here is that what you were saying on um, your other show with your co-host is that Fox News can't concede any point. Mm. They can't. Right. Even if it's blatantly true. Right. They, they can't distort from their narrative. And we think, well, their narrative is purely monetarily based for their donors. I think, of no. course, it's that. Yeah. I think there's a larger point is that because of their indoctrination, and not being able to concede to the left on any point, they're yeah. going to defend it even though it's blatantly obvious. And I'd like to get your take on that. I'll see your, your call off there. It's good to talk to you again. Hey, good to talk to you, man. Glad to have you on the line. Pat, you 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 hit something on the head here, right? Here, Here is a problem that we have to be willing to fight with. That's the key thing. It's all or nothing for conservatism. All or nothing. See, we we look at neoliberalism as the greatest threat from the progressive side, right? We look at neoliberalism as the greatest threat, but like we are actually starting to get concessions from corporate dims. Not many. It's not the fight's not won. It's not over, right? It it, it could be a sleight of hand. But we actually have corporate dims talking about Medicare for all. That's that's progress. With conservatism, the caller Pat Longtime support of the show is 100% accurate. They are on some dominionism slash, I, I mean, Christian Zionism slash totalitarianism. And every single one of those words means something very specific and something unique. But when you combine those together, it is an all or none scorch earth game with them. They think the world would be better if liberalism, progressivism, and anything that's not 100% you neatly fit inside of their ideology, they think that we should be removed from the face of the earth or at least have our constitutional rights removed, right? You have Roy Moore out of Alabama who believes that the First Amendment was literally just for Christians, right? So, so this is an all or nothing scorch earth game for them. And they see any, they don't believe in coexistence. There's a clip of Paula White who, this is a fundamental difference, man. The, my, you know, this upcoming podcast, I want you guys to sign up for it and subscribe. And, and I'm going to treat it as a whole different entity. But it's so important because this is a fundamental difference between um, most black Christians and this vein of white evangelical Christianity in America. Paula White, who's a spiritual advisor to Donald Trump. Uh, Paula White said that, you know, we're not here to blend in. We're here to take over, saying that Christianity is here in America to take over over is a matter of of legality they are here to to change america into a theocracy and 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 so this is like this is something totally different than most black christians in america who believe in liberation theology or maybe they just they just believe in god right we're not here we we already know 
this is the unique difference. We already know what it's like to be on the side of the oppressed. We know what it is to be oppressed. So there's nothing that's in us for the most part. There's always exceptions to the rule, but there's very little inside of black Christians who want to dominate and oppress and be the, the ruling power in America at the expense of the freedoms and the liberties of everyone else. This is literally what dominionism is about in the United States. And this is what they, and this is how they can excuse everything that Donald Trump does because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how evil of a man or how disgusting or, or, or debased of, of a man he is or, or how lewd and, and, and lascivious he, you know, he actually is because all that matters is that he is the tool that's ushering in their domination. That's some dangerous stuff. And whereas I don't, I wouldn't say that the majority of white evangelicals as, as individuals believe that when you have people like John Hagee and you have people like Paula White who are sitting in these positions of influence over a large swath of people preaching that ideology day in and day out, that is as dangerous. And that is quite literally what fuels this totalitarian all or nothing move by the Republican party, by conservatism. It is, it's mixed with religious dogma. And that's what gives them, uh, they feel like the legitimacy and the right, they, they feel like ordained by God and that anything that does not conform to that worldview, 100% is the devil and morally bankrupt and has to be purged. That's how, that's how they could look at a person as, I mean, it's not going to be popular with some of my audience, but milk toast is Barack Obama, who was as non-threatening as Barack Obama. I mean, he was as bland of a black person in power as you can get. This is what Michael Eric Dyson said. He was like, uh, uh, he was like the, the Hank Aaron, right? He was the he was as black as the times would permit. He was as progressive as the times could handle because be, they still think Barack Obama was a socialist, right? And, and it's as, as milk toast and, and bland, you know, he's a great speaker and all those good things, but, but he was non-threatening from an American systemic systems level, right? He was non-threatening to the American domestic policy. He wasn't going to, uh, overturn the, uh, wall street. He wasn't going to do it. He wasn't uh, going to seize the means of production in the United States. He wasn't going to nationalize the banks. He wasn't going to do anything like that. And yet, and still they saw that he was the greatest threat to American democracy and liberty and to Christianity. They felt this was a man who went to church. This is a man who, who, if he ever had any indiscretion on Michelle Obama, he was, he was, was, yeah, we never, nobody has ever heard about it, right? He had, he was a family man. He was everything that you would expect a Christian type person to be. And yet you have this vein of, of Republicanism, evangelicalism, uh, this vein of Christian conservatism politics that viewed him as the literal, like the spawn of Satan. That is the mindset that the caller was talking about. That is what we're up against. And while I feel it's important for us to continue hammering corporate Democrats for power, we can't take our eyes off of this threat that is that is in power. The literal the, the people that are in power think like this.